And Liam and Nathan know that because they are in their parents' hands. And their parents are in God's hands. And I chose this particular hymn for lots of reasons. One of the big ones, though, is that Heather and Hope, my daughters, have been on a spiritual journey for a year. Left July 1st last year and came back on July 1st this year, going to many continents, Africa, Asia, and Australia, uh, the main continents, and, and North America too, by the way. And they were always in God's hands. Always. So, you're going to hear a message from our hearts, and then tonight you'll see a lot of pictures and hear a lot of stories at 7. Let's pray. Lord, we're thankful that we're in your hands. And just right now, as Liam is letting his dad know that he's here, we want to let you know we're here, and we're glad to be in your hands. So take us. And yes, we pray the prayer that uh, Jenny Owen prayed, let them hear you through us, and let your words be ours. Let them see that your love is the reason we're inspired. And when given the choice, may they recognize your voice, and let them hear you through us, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope once you read to us the passage that we have been led to to share. I'm going to be reading from Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. One day, some parents brought their little children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. We were led to this passage because the title of this message is The Adventures of a Childlike Faith. And I think Jesus was trying to get this point across to all of the adult children. You've got to have a childlike faith if you're going to enter the kingdom of God. Enter. And it's not just in heaven. The kingdom of God is here now. And having a childlike faith allows you to have a relationship with Jesus now and be in that kingdom now. So there are a lot of characteristics of childlike faith, and we're just going to share with you four this morning. Uh, Heather, what's the first one we're going to talk about? Risky curiosity. Um, Hope and I, I, while we were on our trip, there was a segment when we were studying together a book by Mike Iaconelli called Dangerous Wonder, The Ch Adventures of Childlike Faith. So we borrowed some of these terms. In that book, we learned a lot. There's a lot, a lot of dimensions to childlike faith, but we just want to share a few of them with you. Risky curiosity. That's something that God cultivated in us in this trip. We had to have it. But I have to say, when we left on this trip a year ago, over a year ago, we only had about a dozen connections, a dozen people to connect with. You know what? God opened the door, though. We had no idea that he was going to connect us to hundreds, hundreds of people all over the world, other believers, and our family of faith. Our family's all over the world. Mm. And we had no idea. But you know what? We had to knock. We had to knock. And that was a little scary. It was a little uncomfortable at times. I know you don't know me, but my name's Heather Dyfell. <laughs> I'm traveling around the world. And, and it was a little scary and uncomfortable. But we had to take that risk. God wanted us to ask, to seek, to knock, so that he could open the door. Mm. Sometimes he wouldn't open it, and we had to be okay with that, because we had to be okay with his answers and his ways. But it still meant that we had to put ourselves out there and be a little risky, dare to be risky, with our curiosity. And that's just one way that we learned about childlike faith. There's How many ways. people did what? you stay with? You... Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. I had really prayed to be able to stay with about 75% of the time with people because I wanted a cultural um, experience. And I knew that compared to a backpackers or hostel, you know, staying in homes is, would help us so much. Mm -hmm. But God blessed it 86% of the time we were with people in their homes. 
So risky curiosity. And um, so I actually used to think that asking questions was somehow wrong and doubting was somehow wrong. So I struggled with this and um, I really had a, a pretty significant God moment. In South Africa, we were staying with um, some people and um, I was in the midst of questioning um, some pretty fundamental things about faith and about God. And I was journaling about it and talking, starting to talk to God about it more and, and talk to Heather about it a little bit. But the very next morning, uh, after I was really in the thick of questioning, uh, this guy who we were connected with there, who was really anointed by the Holy Spirit, looked me square in the eye and said, you know, it's okay to question. God wants us to question. That's how we get to know him. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. That's God speaking to me. Um, and that was just, um, it was just a powerful time for me. And so it, just like children, we need to ask questions and feel okay about it. And um, that's how we learn about his people, about his creation, about our relationship with him. And um, otherwise, we'll miss out. It's interesting, this feature of the child life, faith, risky curiosity, is really seen in children. Have you noticed how children... When they start beginning to talk, they start asking questions. And they ask more and more and more questions. We have one grandchild, three and a half years old, and her name is Madeline, and we were with her for about a month this summer, and she asked at least 2,482 <laughs> questions. <laughs> well, she wanted to know. She really was curious. And I started thinking, wow, why is it that the older we get, the less fewer questions we ask? It's not just men who don't want to ask directions and don't, don't have the pride. It's, it's, are we arrogant and think we know it all? I don't need to grow more? Are we afraid of the answers that our Lord will give us? Risky curiosity, that has to be one of the childlike faith features that our Lord Jesus had in mind when he was holding those children. What's another characteristic? Uh, wide-eyed listening and uh, again I can't help but think of our, our niece and even these children here today that um, you know wide-eyed listening you, you I picture my our three and a half year old niece and and just when she's in new situations or around new people her eyes are big and she's listening and you know she's she often clings to someone or somebody she knows and trusts and loves well, this very much like our, uh, our journey, Heather and I had to keep our eyes and ears open constantly mm. and aware of what's around us. I mean, to stay safe, but really to be open to learning from the situations and to be able to adjust and be flexible. You know, and we clung to the voice of the Holy Spirit in some pretty powerful ways, letting him direct us. And essentially, we were almost playing the game red light, green light. I don't know if you know that tag game. It's a simple tag game. You stop at red lights and you go at green lights. Well, we taught the same game and taught the, the scripture to it as um, following the voice of the Holy Spirit to kids around the world. That's something that Heather actually is very gifted in uh, using games and applying scripture. So that was one activity. Another activity was um, who are you listening to? Now, this was based on another Jenny Owens song, um, Who Are You Listening To? The activity is uh, a lot of fun. You ask for a pair from the audience or the group of young people that know each other really well. And one, the better listener, hopefully, is on one end, blindfolded, one end of the room. The other person leads them through obstacles like chairs, books, whatever we put in, in the way. And they have to follow the directions to try not to touch anything. But the added challenge is that within 10 seconds, I start inviting all of the audience, all the other young people, to start yelling out their own directions. So they really have to fine tune and know their friend's voice, to tune into that voice to really get through, and they do pretty well, because they know each other's voice. But then I ask um, a pair that doesn't know each other, and the same thing, they try to get through it, but because they don't know the voice, they have a lot harder time, and sometimes they even want to give up. It's so challenging, and, and there's so many applications for this in our lives. Um, 
you know, the, the different challenges that God, that, ha that happens in our life, but God always gives us a way out, just like in 1 Corinthians 10. He always brings us out, but we have to know his voice. And just like Elijah had to learn, it's not in the earthquake, it's not in the fire, it's not in the wind. It's in his whisper. So we have to know his voice. You know, in our own lives, we have these voices in the world. We have our challenges, but we also have all the voices of the world, and they're very loud. Our possessions, our busyness, our activities. You know, there's lots of voices, even people well-intentioned in our lives. We have to know God's voice, mm. his whisper. And Hope and I had to learn that very tangibly. We had some cultures and communities we were in that were very loud, but we had to know God's voice. And we sought him out in different ways. For one, we did devotions every day together. We also um, listened to a lot of music, including Jenny Owens had a big influence on us. We also met amazing Christians that spoke, just like Hope shared, spoke. God spoke through them. And we also did a lot of processing together. And because of that, we could have been just wandering around the earth, meandering, but it turned into a journey, a journey around the world. You mentioned Jenny Owens. Uh, how many of you know who Jenny Owens is? Just curiosity, not many of you. She's blind, and she has the most beautiful voice and creates these gorgeous songs. Wide-eyed listening, a blind lady, because mm -hmm. she listens to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about how um, the children in the parents' arms, uh, children uh, listen to their parents, not just their words, but their tone of voice. And they know when they are being loved. They can trust that voice. And I'm just thinking, one of the greatest features of a childlike faith is really have wide-eyed listening. To listen to our Lord. Jesus knew that. If they listen to his voice, if you and I listen to his voice, we'll indeed be in the kingdom of God. What's the third feature that we talked about? Daring playfulness. It makes me think of these block letters. If you've been in my dad's office, you've seen. It says, don't miss the joy. Don't miss the joy. And that was given to me uh, a long time ago by that phrase by Bruce Larson who was a covenant brother for many, many years. And uh, we'd get together once a year with a bunch of us. And, and he would just tell all of us, you know, whatever you're doing in life, don't miss the joy. And that's a good catch question, isn't it, Don? It's a good catch question. Whatever you're doing, if you're missing the joy, maybe you need to reconsider what you're doing. And that fits with our understanding of what is the chief end of a person. The chief end of a person is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And that's part of what daring playfulness is all about. But there's a, a, and the fourth feature too, we're talking about risky curiosity and wide-eyed listening and daring playfulness. What's the fourth characteristic? Actually, before we go on, real oh, quick, okay. I wanted to share about daring, daring playfulness. Okay. It makes me think of this time when we were in Malawi um, and we were part of, our travels involved training youth workers to use games in an experiential mm -hmm. way right. to share um, about God's word. And so I had 50 youth workers in this village, and they worked with youth in all varying ways. Um, and they had, it was from all ages as well, of adults. And it was really interesting to have them all together. I have to say in the context, though, in Malawi, there's a distinct division between child, childhood and adulthood. Children want to become adults really badly because you don't have any kind of credibility or any say in that culture unless you have children and you're married. And so they get married very young sometimes. And if they don't get married, they're still youth, even if they're 40 or older. <laughs> Some of us are still hanging on to that. <laughs> but uh, but you, childhood and adulthood is very different and they turn away from childhood completely. They weren't, um, they weren't in touch with children, the culture of youth as much, and what was happening. Games they were playing, youth were playing. And so this um, workshop was really a lot of fun because we just played games and helped them to understand the idea of attaching scripture to them. And they got so into it. They were laughing and smiles. And in fact, they got so into it. There's this one woman, she was like 55, 60. We were playing the game Steal the Bacon, if you know what I'm talking about. She dove back into her team to get the point. 
<laughs> she was so into it. And it was a joy to just see this cultivating and re rekindling the idea of what, what it is to be daring with their playfulness again. In fact, one um, gentleman, older gentleman, stood up at the end and gave me some feedback saying, you know, I don't even pay attention to what kids are doing most of the time. In fact, I'm telling them to stop playing and come listen to me lecture to them and talk to them. Now I'm inspired to go and engage with them and play with them so that I can share God's word with them in that way. It was beautiful. I would think if, if Jesus would give, give you a message this morning, one of the messages, I dare you to play with me. I <laughs> dare you to play with me. I, I dare you to be smiling and clapping and dancing and enjoying my presence. Mm. Childlike faith, that would be a part of it. Okay, what is that fourth characteristic? The fourth characteristic is dangerous wonder. Dangerous wonder. And it makes me think of the um, part in scripture where Jesus walks on water. Now here are the disciples where the waves are huge and it's the middle of the night and they don't know what's going on, the wind's blowing, and all of a sudden they see this figure coming at them. I think they were a little scared, a little fearful, anxiety, <laughs> probably pretty strong until Jesus identified himself. And I think some of the people in the boat probably were just in awe and astonishment and wonder. Hmm. But what did Peter do? He jumped out of the boat. He put himself into that dangerous position. It makes me think of when kids um, are at the side of the pool and their parent is sitting there in the water. The parent's like, just jump. You know, and they're just like, ah. You know, they just jump right into their parent's arms because they trust that. You know, they're willing to put themselves in that dangerous position of wonder. And that's what Christ wants us to do. He wants us to put ourselves into that dangerous spot. And Hope and I had to do that so many times mm -hmm. in this traveling mm -hmm. that it made this verse that's in the front of the bulletin very real to us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him. and He will make your path straight. He will make your path straight. That's a promise. Mm. And um, it, this dangerous wonder thought really reminds me of a phrase I remember seeing when I was younger, and it really has come to be true in so many ways. Um, still learning it. I'll never stop learning it, probably. Um, let go, let God. The idea is, is not, okay, I'll just let go and let God take care of it, and I'll, you know, Sort of, it's not a laissez-faire sort of let go, let God. It's not letting yourself go or letting yourself be swept up by the situation. And it's not an all or nothing thing. It takes balance. Mm. And it really means, for me anyway, um, trusting God to take hold of the situation mm. and to really remain in communication with him about that. You know, because that's uh, giving him the control, but acknowledging him always and um, trusting him to lead us through the storms, through the chaos, through the times where it feels like he's absent, but he's not. Through the frustrations and doubt with that hint of dangerous wonder. So it reminds me of uh, a lot of stories, but I can only share one right now. You have to come back tonight to hear more. <laughs> um, and this is the second week of our year-long journey. Um, we are in Mozambique, Africa, and um, Heather and I come from planning backgrounds. I was a project manager for some time, and Heather was a program manager, and our life depended on how well we could organize and plan out our projects and programs. Well, God really broke us from that, and. Uh, broke me pretty severely from that habit, from that planning nature. And uh, I don't know how much you guys know about Africa, but it's kind of hard to trust the schedule and the timing of things in Africa. And it's not very easy to find information like I was used to um, in my project management days. So I was, I was really broken from that, and I was, it was a struggle. I was full, filled with doubt and fear. And, uh, Thank goodness God anointed Heather with the Holy Spirit, and in, with a peaceful attitude, she said, you know what, it's okay, we'll just go a different way than we had planned. And, um, and that wasn't easy for me, but I learned to really let go and start trusting God in that, with that dangerous wonder. And even back, being back home now, the, still, the same lesson is still applied. 
You know, how can I um, learn to wonder instead of worry? Mm-hmm. You know, that he's going to, he will continue to provide and guide us. Um, just like he did throughout the journey. Uh, and I think what we're talking about here is having an active faith. And you hear the expression, we're saved by faith. You've heard that before. We're not saved by faith. You can't have faith in faith. It won't get you anywhere. It might get you pumped up to get, it, get going, but it won't last long. Having faith in Jesus, that's different. Because who's your faith in? Not primarily in yourself, but in the one who really cares and loves you. And I think that's something, a childlike faith, having this dangerous wonder, is truly, truly putting your faith in this Lord. That's why Jesus had those children around him. They They gravitated to him. And one last thing before we leave this subject of childlike faith, and that is, what's the difference between childlike faith and childish faith? I think we, most of us know this. Childish faith is one that says, I want it. It's mine. I want my way. And it centers around me. It's all about me. Childlike faith is the one that places their faith in the one that loves them. And that's why Jesus was so insistent that these children were giving us living examples of what the kingdom of God is all about. Yes, to have risky curiosity, wide-eyed listening, daring playfulness, dangerous wonder. Let us pray. Lord, we are your children. And we've come here this morning, maybe some just to be a part of something else that's going on, but we want to be involved in what you're doing in your kingdom. You alone are our hope. You are our light. You are our strength. You are our song. And we want to have childlike faith that will help us to enjoy and share your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.